This is a video about identification of the average treatment effect using the running example of uh, charter school attendance. So here, as usual, identification, uh, we would have identification if the average treatment effect can be learned exactly given knowledge of the distribution of observable variables in the population. And the obstacle here is that we do not observe both potential outcomes for each individual in the population. We only observe one or the other. So to be more concrete, if we think about our universe, we have the people who went to the charter school, and if you remember our outcome is just a binary variable for whether or not they eventually graduate from college, but we can imagine we have people up here who went to charter school, and then we have people over here who did not. And so the people who in our universe did go to the charter school using the notation of the book, this is our YB. So people who actually went to charter school and then people who did not their outcomes are YA. So what we can observe and what we can directly learn about is we can figure out the mean of YB and the mean of YA and we can compute the difference of means like that. That's uh, just using the observable parts. But in our thinking about potential outcomes and causality in this particular framework, we imagine there's also this parallel universe, right, where uh, these individuals who in our universe are in the charter school, we imagine them over here, their parallel selves, where everything is the same in the parallel universe except that they did not go to charter school, and similarly for the individuals who did go to, or sorry, who did not go to the charter school in our universe, we can imagine a parallel universe where they did. And then what we are interested in in thinking about the potential outcomes extend this further. Uh, is we're interested in sort of all of these things over here as in the uh, not side, regardless of the universe. These are the untreated potential outcomes. So now this includes all six <laughs> individuals in the population. You can see all six uh, untreated potential outcomes. And then on the other side is our treated potential outcomes. So what we want to learn is not about YA and YB, but about YT in YU. So the identification question 
basically boils down to uh, are these two differences in means equal to each other or not. If they're equal to each other, that means that when we estimate the top one that only involves observable variables, we can interpret it as the second one because they're equal. But if they're not equal, then we can we can still learn about the first one, but we can't interpret it with that causal meaning. So I'm going to draw this now in a different way. If we imagine untreated and treated uh, groups, so this is the y values will be on the vertical axis. And you can imagine uh, what we have here is that there's, just to keep it simple, maybe families that are really interested in education and they try all sorts of different things, including taking the extra time to apply to the charter school and uh, maybe drive a little farther or something like that. And imagine because they're also doing lots of other things, they're reading with their kids, they're finding other uh, extracurricular opportunities or tutoring, uh, they have higher um, graduation rates from college regardless of whether they're in a charter school or not. Um, so I know in this case the Y is binary, but I will draw it sort of not binary just so we can see things a little better. Um, so we can imagine they're sort of good up here. And uh, let me just to keep it simple, imagine they, they just stay the same regardless of which type of school. And then there's other uh, families who just have lower outcomes, again, regardless of school. So if we were able to get a random sample of the or of these and a random sample of these, then we could correctly estimate the averages of the two and uh, correctly estimate the average treatment effect. The problem is that, as we said, if the sort of more education focused families are more likely to take the extra time to apply to the charter school, that means that we will observe them observe their treated potential outcomes. And if the other families do not, then we observe only their untreated potential outcomes. So this ends up being our YB and our YA. And when we look at that, we can see uh, there's sort of this, you know, positive difference. Right, so our mean YB minus our mean YA is definitely positive. Whereas if we had been able to see all of the untreated potential outcomes and all of the treated potential outcomes, we'd see that actually of the way I've drawn it, there's no effect. The average is around here for untreated and the average is here for treated. So actually the ATE is zero. So we can see in that case why uh, the ATE is not identified due to the self-selection into treatment. In other words, the, the choice of going to a charter school or not isn't totally random. It's actually based on other variables that also affect the outcome. 
in contrast, as I said, if we were able to randomize it, um, then we wouldn't have that selection problem because we would be the ones selecting who gets into treatment or not. So if we were able to get something, let's say, more like you know, this person and this person and this person here, and then that would leave us these two and that one over here, um, then that would give us the appropriate comparison. The issue in many cases in economics is there's either legal or ethical obstacles to randomizing. Um, so, you know, we couldn't just go into someone's home and say, hey, we're going to force you to go to this charter school you don't want to go to. Um, or, hey, we're going to, you know, force you to show up at this job training program that you don't think is valuable. Or, um, hey, we're going to force you to start smoking or whatever else. Um, so that can be an obstacle. In this particular case with charter schools, what people have done is, uh, at least for the more popular charter schools, which of course may not be representative, uh, but if they're too popular, so there's more people who want to attend than they have space to accommodate, uh, then they often run lotteries to see who gets in. So they don't uh, admit you based on you know, your test scores or anything. They literally just randomize it. And what's nice about that is then you can take those uh, people who got in and who didn't, and they're, they both selected into wanting to go to the charter school. Uh, so we don't sort of have the same worry about the self-selection and uh, whether or not they got to go to the charter school was actually randomized. Um, so again, in that case, that would mean we don't see... Ooh, running out of colors here. We're not going to see these guys down here because they were not applying to the charter school in the first place, but we could at least compare um, these uh, individuals up here, some of whom would win the lottery and end up seeing their YT, and some who would not win the lottery, we would see their YU. So, hope that was a helpful, if long, <laughs> discussion about identification of the average treatment effect.